Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Using Excel to Manage Your Personal Finances webinar. We are pleased to have Jamie Campbell from Bartolome Cucciarelli LLC with us today. This webinar is part of a series of financial literacy webinars. For a full listing of upcoming programs, visit our website at moneymattersnj.com. At this time, your phone line has been muted for the duration of the presentation, but feel free to use the question or chat box on your screen throughout the presentation if you have any questions. Now at this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Jamie. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for setting aside an hour of your lives to join me for some power and peace of mind around your finances and as well as around Microsoft Excel, which I think is the greatest thing since sliced bread, which you can probably tell by looking at the screen because I'm, I'm certified up to the hilt in Microsoft Excel and related technologies because what I love to do is use this technology and other business uh, software to bring power and peace of mind to the people that I work with. And today's topic happens to be Excel and personal finances. You will learn a lot today um, about the software itself and about some underlying principles of, of um, running your personal finances and how you can use some information to make purposeful and actionable decisions that help you get to go where you want to go with your personal finances and even a little bit in your business finances. So let's launch in. I'm going to minimize this and bring up Microsoft Excel. And as a matter of fact, this is a very interactive seminar. As, as much as we can make a webinar interactive, um, we're going to work on that today. So what I would like you to do is become familiar with the chat window, which you should have, uh, which you will have seen when you uh, open up this interface for the webinar. And what I'd like you to do is type in the chat window the answer to this question. What version of Microsoft Excel are you using? And if you're not sure, you can look up at the screen. The version on the left is Excel 2010. The version on the right is Excel 2007. And if your version of Excel looks nothing like this, but doesn't have any icons, it's just words at the top, you're probably using 2003 or prior. I see a number of people answering already. Some with 2003, 7, 10. Some people are using both versions, like I am. That's fine, good. I'm going to give you another minute because um, this not only gives me important information. Ah, a Mac user. Hi, Shashank. <laughs> um, this not only gives me important information about uh, what software we're using today and what software you're using, but also gives you access to having a more interactive session by becoming familiar with the chat feature. Good. More on 2003, 2007. Oh, jumping from 03 to 2010. Good luck. It's going to be a good ride. Okay, 7, 10. We've got about 20 people answered so far. Good. Another. 30 seconds or so while, while people are still finding the, uh, the chat feature. 2010, 03, good, good, okay. So, uh, so far it looks like we have a lot of people who have already moved to the world of the ribbon, which is what you see before. You would all these icons across the top of the screen. Good, we still have some answers coming in. Good, keep looking for the, the chat window where you can type a response. And we have a few people who are still using 03. Alyssa, are you able to give a little bit of guidance? Uh, someone is looking for the chat feature. Um, it should be right at the bottom. Um, it, it should say to submit your question. Um, you would type it right in the, at the bottom of the screen. Now, if someone's panel is collapsed, um, should, that, should they look for the, that little red arrow to show the panel where the chat screen is located? Correct. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't show um, a bar going down the um, right of your screen, um, there should be an arrow pointing to the left-hand side. That will enlarge that um, so that you would be able to see the question box. Okay. Good. Thank you, Alyssa. Good. 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 More answers are still coming in. Oh, another person using vote. How about that? Okay. Good. And I appreciate your indulgence at the very beginning. I want to make sure that enough uh, that as many people as possible really have access to this being an interactive session, which will help to make it very powerful for you. Oh, another Mac user. Okay, good. We have about, uh, I'd say, 
Uh, 30 people have responded so far. This is good. A lot of people on the ribbon. Now, um, the good news for you today is that although I'll be using um, Excel 2010 and 7 to show you these techniques, um, all of the techniques are available in both in all versions of Excel, even 03. In some cases, what you click on may be slightly different in order to get the result. Um, and if that's the case and you're looking for how to do something at 03 that is different from what we're doing today, please don't hesitate to send me an email. You'll get my contact information at the end of the webinar. All right, we'll go on. Now, there are a couple of things that were promised to you today that we're about to deliver on. Tracking personal activity, tracking investments, saving up for something special, or even using Excel to get things going with starting your business. And let's start with, uh, let's say, Excel 2010. And what I'm going to show you from scratch is how you might start to put together a, a spreadsheet to track your personal financial activity. And let's start out with, uh, with some basic information. For example, date, um, name, description, account, and amount. And just for ease that everyone can see, we'll do a little formatting here. And this is, this is where we start. This is where we start from scratch. This is your basic uh, place where you're going to put information. And we'll be filling that in together. And there's a wonderful tool in Excel that as time goes by and you enter your, your transactions into this area that you create for yourself, there, is, there are a couple of magic buttons that I'm going to show you where they are. And you're going to have some great information, useful information that you can take and make decisions about based on this, this detail. So what you won't have to do is constantly go through your detail trying to figure out what it all means. Enter the information in as it occurs in real time. And when you're ready to make a decision based on it, look at it in the summary form. You'll click a couple of buttons and I'll show you what those are. So a uh, date, let's say 1-1-12. One, one, uh, a name, let's say you have some income from your salary. Let's say you work for um, someone type in the name of, of your employer or income source. And we'll, we'll put that right up on the screen. Someone uh, type it into the chat box and I'll, I'll put up that, that company's name or that income source and we'll, we'll put that in here as, as an income to get us going. Okay, we have forest research. Forest research description, we'll call it um, regular salary. Account, we'll call it income. And for the amount, uh, someone type in a number for a paycheck amount. Any amount will do. Okay, 50,000, I love it. 50,000 a month. Or 50,000 every two weeks, even better. Love it. Okay? This is what it takes. This is all that it takes to type in, to, to enter into your database, something that just happened in your financial life. And that's all that it takes. So let's say the next day we are going to spend some money. Let's say uh, we spend it on the bank. Uh, someone type in the <laughs> someone type in the name of the bank. Teresa, I saw your comment on fifty thousand every two weeks. That's great. Uh, someone type in the name of the bank that you love. Chase. Okay, Chase Bank. Let's call this mortgage. And then we'll, we'll call this mortgage as well. In the account column, that's the place where you want to see a standard list of accounts. If it's called mortgage here, then the next month you're also going to call it mortgage. This name is never going to change. The description field is something that can be fluid. Notes that you write to yourself or a mortgage, I paid a little extra this month on the principal. These are helpful notes to yourself that, you know, if, if that makes you happy, you can need a note, that's fine. Uh, someone give me a monthly mortgage amount. Okay, uh, 3000 Now, please take note. I'm entering an expense as a negative number. 
because for the tool that we're going to be using in Excel, you'll definitely want incoming funds to be listed as positive numbers and outgoing funds to be used as negative numbers. All right, let's put in one more expense, uh, one five twelve. Let's say we go, went to grocery shopping. I go to Wegmans, we'll do grocery shopping, and we'll put in the account as food, and we'll put in, I don't know, 100 bucks. Again, as a negative number. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to highlight this entire column, and on the Home tab, clicking this dollar sign, because dollar signs make me happy, and why, why do it over every single line? So the first shortcut of the day is, if you, want, if you like the formatting in every cell, why not make it easier on yourself by highlighting the entire column and clicking the dollar sign? Or if you don't want the dollar sign to show up, but you still like the commas and the, the decimal places, use what's called comma style by clicking the comma button. All right, uh, we'll speed this along by putting in 1, 15, 12. We'll copy and paste from the last salary. We'll put in 1, 20, 12, some more grocery shopping. We'll put in, let's say, $75 this time, who knows, and we'll put in one thirty one twelve. We'll put in some, um, know, some medical care. We'll go to, uh, let's say, CVS. we we'll get some prescriptions, and we'll call this medical care, and we'll put in, let's say, we have to pay $20 for copay. All right. So here we have an example of, wait for it, a database. Yes, I know, it's a scary term, but we have just created one right here, and this is real life. This is what we're up to. We have some income, we have some expenses. Now, what are we going to do with it? Always keep in mind, the point is to be actionable. Let's get some information from this. What can we do with it? And now I'm going to show you some magic buttons. First of all, with your cursor anywhere in this database, it doesn't matter where, and please don't waste time highlighting information. Imagine if this database were 10,000 rows long. You don't want to waste your time sitting and highlighting. Just click somewhere in the middle of the database, and from the Insert tab, I want you to click Table. Everything else is automatic. Just go with it, click OK, and bam. Not only do you have a lovely professional looking table, but there are additional features which are, you're going to love. When you get to the end of the row and you hit the tab key, it automatically extends down. You get the beautiful stripes, it's easier to read, plus what I'm about to show you, which is called pivot tables, becomes easier and even more automatic when this detailed information is listed, is, is created as a table instead of just as a regular cell. So let's put another one on 131.2012 so you can see what I'm talking about it. Let's call it, uh, let's go with Chase again, only now we'll call it interest, we'll call it interest, and the, we'll call our accounts um, interest income. And let's say we made, let's see if I don't know what banks are paying out these days, $10 in interest. I know, I know, where are we going to spend it? But let's do that. Now, here's my second magic button. I told you there were going to be a couple of buttons to really get some powerful information, actionable information from this. The first button was the table button. That was, I went to the insert tab and clicked table, which is now grayed out because we already did it. The next button is also here in the insert tab. Click pivot table. This, I, I can't do an Excel webinar or seminar or workshop without doing pivot tables because they are the greatest thing ever. As a matter of fact, go ahead and enter into the chat window. Have you ever heard of a pivot table before? Have you used a pivot table before? Let's see what you've got to say. A pivot table summarizes information. Ah, I see it's new for a lot of people. Some people have actually worked with pivot tables or, or heard of them. We have a pivot table aficionado in the audience. Okay, a, a few of them, good. A pivot table, here's, here's Jamie's official definition, summarizes information. You're never going to look at a pivot table and look for a lot of details. It's a summary, and it happens in just a couple of clicks. First, click somewhere inside your table. Second, from the Insert tab, click Pivot Table. Never mind about this arrow with all these options. Just go for Pivot Table. 
skip all of this stuff, click OK, and we are almost done, believe it or not. Now you say, the pivot table summarizes information. What information do we want to summarize? Well, let's go back to our database. What do you want to know? How much you spent and what you spent it on, right? But in a summary form. How much you spent. So the first question that you ask yourself when you create a pivot table is, what do I want to measure? If you're taking notes, this one you're going to want to write down. What do I want to measure? And whatever column here is the answer to that question is the one that you drag down to the value box and let go. In this case, we want to measure the amount, the dollar amount. Now, this in itself is not very impressive. I could use the sum function for that. What do I need a pivot table for? This, what I'm about to show you, is some magic. Which one of these fields showed me the accounts? The accounts. Where did my money go? I don't, I don't care about the vendor. I want to know how much I spent on food, how much I spent on mortgage. Well, that's this field, the account field. So watch this. I'm going back to the pivot table, and I take that account field, drag it down to row labels, and let go. Do you love that? Is that incredible? You have right here, right now, a, a summarized picture of how much money is coming in and where is it all going. I'm going to show it to you one more time. I'm going to delete this. Oh no, I'm deleting it. No, no, it's okay. It'll, it'll bring it back in two minutes. I click somewhere inside the pivot table. I click insert. I'm sorry. I click somewhere inside the regular table. I click on the insert tab and I click pivot table. I skip all this. Just click OK. Now, what's the question I have to ask myself? What do I want to measure? And of all these column headers, which one is the one containing the information I want to measure? That's usually the stuff with the dollars in it. We drag that down. Let's blow this up so everyone can see. Let's change this on the home page to comma style. And measure by what? I want total by account name. That's what I'm interested in, and here you go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a pivot table. You get summary information. I don't care how much how much I spent on Wegman versus Whole Foods versus me. I just want to know total food. I don't need that kind of detail. I don't care how much I spent on uh, medical care for CVS versus um, heating pads at the local pharmacy. Medical care is medical care. For the moment, I just want to know the basic category, and that's how you get the answer. Now, there's another Excel technique, and this one is only available in Excel 2010. Everything I've shown you to this point is, a ver is available in all of the versions uh, of Excel that you wrote about when you turned it, even Excel for Mac, Excel 03, all of it. What I'm about to show you is only available in the latest version of Excel. It's called a slicer. I can't wait to show you what this is all about. First of all, you have to click somewhere on the pivot table so Excel knows that you're interested in a, in a special feature for the pivot table. Go to the Insert tab, which seems to be the favorite tab of the day, and click on Slicer. The answer to the question, what is a slicer, is this. A slicer is a filter. It is an on-screen, easy-to-use, printable, viewable, clickable filter. So what if we only want to look at our expenses and we really don't care about the income for the moment? Well, I'm going to hold down my control key, click, click. And when I let go of control key, those items are gone. I mean gone. And you are only looking at your expenses right now. Gee, how much should I spend so far? $31.95. Where did it all go? Here's where it all went. The answer to your question, what's missing? You can see it in the slicer. Oh, I'm not including income. Is that the greatest thing or what? It's easy. Now let me show you the next step, actually. Let me show you again how I got the slicer on here. I'm going to restore everything so it's the pivot table as you saw it. Let me show you this again. To add the slicer, which is nothing more than a filter, or a really great filter, click on the pivot table, on the Insert tab, Click Slicer. Now, I can put all kinds of slices on here, but what I want to filter is the account. I click OK, and here is the slicer. 
If I only want to see food, I'll click on food. If I only want to see medical care, I'll click on med care. If I want to select multiple items, I will hold down the control key, click, 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 and let go. My pivot table updates. And if I hold down the control key, and if I click on something that's highlighted, I can make it go away. By the way, since a lot of people ask me this when I work with them on Slicer, how do I quickly make it all come back? You see this little shape up here, which is a, oh, what are those things called? The cones where you pour the, oh my gosh, it's like a funnel. Thank you, it's a funnel. Um, it's a funnel with an X through it. And what that means is if you click the X, it will make the filter disappear and everything comes back. So, I will... Hold down control, click income, income, and you can see how this works. Now let's go back to the database. Now, I'm going to click on the bottom right, hit the tab key, the table automatically expands. Now this is the beauty. Let's say we say uh, 2, 1, 12. Uh, let's copy and paste from our last paycheck. And we want to come here and update the pivot table. Here's how you refresh. There's more than one way, but the quickest way is to right click the pivot table, and click, you guessed it, refresh. And, oh, of course there's no, hold on a second, there's no category here. Hold on. Let's remove the filter, so we've got everything. And this did not update to fix our, oh, yes, I did. I'm sorry. I was looking in the wrong category. I'm panicking. It was supposed to update. It did update because we have income of 150000 Okay, good. My face can return to its normal color. When you use a table instead of just a regular spreadsheet, but when you convert it to a table, any updates that you make for additional lines down here that are included in this table format, like this and like this and like this, when you click refresh, they're automatically included in the pivot table. Use this technique to keep things nice and easy. Look, you want to focus on your financial goal, not fucks with the technology. So what I'm giving you here is, is key to making Excel work for you instead of having to square it out. Why didn't it update? Oh, the speaking pivot table. Work with me here and use a table, and you right click and click refresh. The pivot table will automatically update. And I'll show you again. Let's say 2, 3, 12, and we'll put in... Uh, all right, I mentioned um, a heating pad. Oh, I love those portable heating pads. Slap one on my back and I'm on my way. And let's again call this medical care. By the way, did you notice I started to type ME, but the rest of it just popped up. I hit enter. I go on with my merry way. Let's say CVS is, I don't know how much those heating pads are, Seven ninety nine, whatever it is. I go back to my pivot table. What do I do to refresh? I right click somewhere inside the pivot table, I click refresh, and look, medical care has updated. You've gained a lot of information so far about keeping track of your financial information, how to quickly and easily summarize it so you're seeing the information that you are most interested in seeing. Now, I have a question for you. And in fact, we have this question in the form of a poll. If Alyssa, you'd be so kind as to post our first poll question. Um, I'd really like to know what's in it for you. What, what brings you here as far as your financial goals, your financial activity? We'll get to the, the tech, why you're here for tech a little bit later. So Alyssa is going to post the poll question. Oh, you're right. I didn't put the expense in as a negative number. Thank you so much. Seven, whoops. 799 goes in as a negative number. We right click and refresh. Ah, thank goodness. Thank you to Anne Marie for posting that. Really appreciate it. Um, and Alyssa, you'll post the first poll question for us? Yes, the first poll question is out there. Um, you can select all that apply. You don't have to just pick um, one answer. So um, we'll give you a couple, couple seconds to get your answers in.
okay, this is great. I'm seeing a trend emerge. Most everyone has voted by now. Definitely a trend here. Most people are looking for peace of mind by knowing where you stand. And also a number of people looking to use Excel to manage their investments. A few people have a special purchase in mind. Great. Good. Okay. Excellent. Thank you all so much for letting me know where you stand. And that also lets me know uh, how, to, how to take this seminar. So uh, we're going to take this webinar a bit. Good. Okay, good. And as a matter of fact, I'd also like to know, if, Alyssa, you wouldn't mind posing the second poll question um, about your preferred way to work on the computer. I'll be teaching you a lot of things today, and some of them are icon-based, and there are also keyboard shortcuts available. And let me know how, how you prefer to work. Okay, we have, okay, about 30 people have voted so far. Okay. I'm seeing on the whole a preference towards icons or a fair mix of icons and keyboard shortcuts. Yep, that's, that's the trend is definitely emerging. Okay. In fact, um, I'm seeing even a, a majority going for a fair mix of icons and keyboard shortcuts. Then that's the way we'll, we'll conduct our seminar today. Sorry, our webinar. And if, uh, if I mention some keyboard shortcuts that you don't care about, then don't remember them, and that's fine, and we'll make sure to emphasize those icons. All right, this is good. All right, then let's go on. And the next thing I'd like to show you is, okay, so, so you know where you stand, because you, you, you entered in your detailed information, and you've constructed a pivot table to quickly give you some insights. However, ladies and gentlemen, a picture speaks a thousand words. And what I'm going to show you now is a wonderful little little visual tool that you can use even with a pivot table. You know, Excel has a wonderful array of charts that are available to you. And since you have gone to the trouble of creating a pivot table, let's have a pivot chart, which can give you really great visual information that's automatically linked to your summary here. And when you click on your pivot table, by the way, this, this one I'm about to show you, even before we get to a pivot chart, this is new for Excel 2007 and 10. The, the idea of a contextual tab, whereas in Oak Tree and Fire, if you, um, if you couldn't do something, it would just be grayed out. Now you have a contextual tab. You see this flush of, I don't know, what is that, magenta, fuchsia up there? Uh, if I click on a regular cell, none of that beautiful stuff is there. It's called a contextual tab, because when I click on something special in, in Excel, this is the same with Word and PowerPoint and Outlook, if you click on something special, you get some contextual tabs, which are not there if you just click on an ordinary cell. Watch what happens when I click on the slicer. I get a contextual tab for the slicer. Watch what happens when I click again on the pivot table. Oh, not only do I get one, I get two contextual tabs. And so when I click on the Options tab, there's a button here for the pivot chart. Let's get that going. And the most powerful tool that I believe um, is useful for communicating where, where your money is going is a pie chart. And I like to go for the 3D pie chart because I think it's cool. But you can pick any other pie chart that floats your boat. Click OK. And this, this is automatic. We love this. I'm going to delete this and do it again to show you how easy it is. First, we have ourselves a normal looking pivot table, albeit made fancy with our slicer, but no contextual tabs. What do I have to do to get those things up here again? Click on something special, in this case, the pivot table. Now I get all these new things available, and from the options tab, I click pivot chart. And because I want to show where the expenses are going and where my money is going, I'm going to choose a pie chart that really speaks to me. I click OK, and here we go, I'm done. I can see that by far, <laughs> my money is going towards my mortgage. Once I have that information, I can take action on it. Are my expenditures in line with my core values? Is, is a question that I'm always asking myself when it comes to my personal finances. It's important to me also to have peace of mind and know where I stand. But for me, it doesn't end there. Just, just to know isn't enough for me. It gives me peace of mind, but then I, it puts me in, 
in a powerful place where I can take action and say, you know what, my, uh, my core values are about, um, let's say, good health and education, which they are. Do my finances show that my money is going towards good health and education? Now, obviously, this has a couple of made-up expenses in it. A, fuller, a more fully fleshed out budget is really going to give you the opportunity to see, am I putting my money out there in accordance with my core values? And this can really give you insight. In fact, I was giving someone, uh, I was working with someone on a one-on-one -on -one basis. She was a, a business owner. And she wanted to actually have a look at her personal finances for a change. She was exercising great management over her business finances, making decisions, the hiring, spending, uh, income decisions. But she wanted to take a closer look at her personal finances. And she had us do this, this that exercise with her, not in Excel, but in, uh, in some accounting software. But we did the same exercise in, in that we interviewed details, we ran some reports, some summary reports, and looked to see where the money's going. And she was shocked to see how much money she was spending on restaurants. Because it wasn't in line with her, what she considered her to be her core values. And that was something that she saw and decided to make change, to bring her, just her actions in line with what her core values were. It's not a matter of saying, you know, she couldn't afford it because that wasn't the case. It's not a matter of saying she wasn't having a good time. That wasn't the case either. She looked at it and said, I want to put my money in a, into a place where it can really do my life some good. And she made those decisions. And that was an incredible breakthrough moment for her. And all of that out of your finances, can you believe it? Oh, that was really great. So I'm going to show you this one more time. Options. Pivot chart, high graph, and just click OK. Now, this is completely linked. In fact, we're going to move this out of the way. This is all linked up. So what you're going to see now, we're going to end up uh, back here. And let's put in um, uh, some car repairs, let's say. 2, 5, 12, let's say, um, where do you go to get your car repaired? I'm looking at the chat window. Okay, we have Firestone. Let's say it's a significant repair. Firestone. And we come back. And as always, we right click and click refresh. And we need to include automotive by holding down the control key and tapping automotive. And there you go. Now, a question that you might be asking is, okay, that's, that's lovely that, you know, the money should be associated with, with my core values, and yeah, I can see how that could make me really happy, but at the same time, something that you don't necessarily hold as a core value costs a lot of money. All right, I'll, I'll grant you that. And at the same time, sometimes something that you really value the highest in your life doesn't take any money at all. I'll grant you that as well. This, this is, a, is a place where those conversations can take place and those actions can take place. For example, I really don't spend a lot of money on education. However, I mean, aside from my master's degree, <laughs> but now that that's over with, these days I'm not spending a lot of money on education. But it is still a core value. I'm just getting a lot of education over the internet, which is expressed through X dollars a month to Comcast. So that's a little arbitrage, you could call it, because there's something that I'm getting a lot of, I'm just not paying a lot of money for. And that's okay. This, this tool is really um, access to seeing where you are and putting them side by side with your core values and seeing if there is any adjustment that you would like to make to have this more reflect you know, what you're all about. You, you can learn a lot about a person by looking at their, their finances. And you can learn about, a lot about yourself by looking at your finances as well. I definitely do it. Um, so we're going to move this off to the side. And uh, something else that I wanted to show you, this great feature in Excel, let's say uh, 2, 15, 12, let's say it's time again for our paycheck, but let's say I don't want to go all the way up and highlight and copy and paste. Now there's something that you can do, as you already know, you can start typing, and after you put in enough letters, it will pop up automatically and all you have to do is hit enter. However, there's another option that's available to you. And this can be especially useful if you have a lot of 
X. You know, we have forest research and we have fire stove, for example. And that's why nothing popped up until we hit the second letter, because the FO versus the FI and fire stove. So there's another option available to you, which can really, not a lot of people know about this, and it's a keyboard shortcut um, only. This one's not available with a mouse. On your keyboard, if you press Alt and you hold it down and tap the down arrow, you get a drop down box containing everything that you've already typed in. And you can go down here with your mouse or with your arrows. And with your mouse, you can click it. Or if you've used the arrows to navigate around, you can just hit enter. And you've got it. This drop down list updates automatically according to anything you've typed in. So let's call this regular salary. And what account should I pick? Again, that was Alt, Down Arrow. I hold down the Alt key. And while I'm holding it down, I tap the down arrow. Is that the greatest little trick? We'll tap income, and we'll go for the 50,000 again. Now, I've got a question that came through. Uh, can you show percent labels on the pie chart? I am so glad you asked that question, and I'm glad that you took me up on my offer of making it interactive. The answer is yes. And you can show uh, the labels on your pie chart by clicking on the pie chart. So you get all kinds of contextual tabs up here. And I'm trying to remember which one has a data label. This one. Data labels. So we're on the layout tab. Data labels. And when you click on more options, you can choose what you want. Maybe you don't want the value, you want the percentage. That's what's been requested. Click close and there you go. Now of course these are expenses, which is why they're negative numbers. Same as the dollar amounts, but that's fine. It, it all adds up to 100, right? Yes, it does. It all adds up to 100, and you can see what the percentages are. Great question. Oh, I'm glad you like the shortcut. Good. Okay. So this is about tracking personal activity. Um, now, there's one thing I wanted to mention about that before we go on to investments and saving up for something special and how you can use this itself for business. Um, in Excel, oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh yes, um, all of this is only for a certain bank account. You might ask yourself, well, what about what about credit cards? Do they count? Where does that come in? This is what I'm going to recommend. You can insert a column. Let's call this um, bank slash CC count. Oh, you know what? I have to show you this greatest keyboard shortcut. I'm going to delete this. When you highlight a column and you hit Control plus on your keyboard, that inserts a column. If you have insert, if you have highlighted a row and you hit Control plus, it'll insert a row. If this is the greatest thing, I'm going to hit Control minus to delete all those extra rows. Again, Control. Plus. And now, if you don't have a 10 key on your keyboard, if you have to use the plus that's on the top of the equal sign in your keyboard, you have to hit Control Shift Plus because Control Equals doesn't, doesn't do much for you here. So you have to go Control Shift Plus, Control Shift Plus, 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 plus to insert a row. And of course, I'm going to hit Control What to get rid of all these extra blank columns. Control Minus, 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 Minus. I really just want one blank column. So that's a keyboard shortcut for those of you who love a fair mix of icons and keyboard shortcuts. So we have bank account slash credit card account. On the home page, let's click wrap text. And this can all be, let's say it's your checking account. Oh, and if you want to know how I got all of those in there at once, first I highlighted well, let me undo. First I highlighted, I typed checking accounts, and instead of hitting enter, I hit control enter. And oh, I can't tell you how much time this saves me in practically anything I'm doing in Excel. It automatically populates through the entire region that I have just highlighted. So you ask me, what about my credit card charges? Here's my answer. One, three, twelve. Let's um, somebody name a credit card company. What credit card should we use today? We shall use, I'm looking, Citibank, okay? City for our credit card. And now the name. If we're using the credit card to make a purchase, 
the file will put in CBS. We've got that in the list. And the description, though, let's go for some more prescriptions, and we'll call that medical care, and let's call it negative, I don't know, another 20 bucks. This is the same, because it's still an expense, even if it hasn't left your checking account. When, you're, when you want some peace of mind, because you know, because you want to know how things, where things stand, your credit card expenses count. What, do you want to sit down at the end of the month with your credit card statement and have like a whole event around this? No, it's going to take a bunch of time out of your day. Don't wait till you get the credit card statement. Come home with a receipt and enter it into your database. And we can do another one as an example on 712. We can hit Alt Arrow to use the drop down box. We'll go with City. We'll, we'll go back to Firestone. We'll have some more car repairs and automotive, and let's say it costs, um, I don't know, $45 and need more wipers. And someone wrote an interesting comment. Entering a checking account in the first column, let's say checking account, and then click the little box at the lower right-hand corner. Oh, 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 Paul, yeah, you were talking about this area. Right, that's, that's for dragging. Gotcha, right. What Paul is talking about is this. Another way you can do it is type checking account, and when you're, when you're done, you've exited the cell, you hit enter. You can also drag this down, this tiny little uh, black speck over here. It's called the fill handle. You can drag that down. You can also double click it, and that's another easy way to fill. Thank you so much, Paul, for that contribution. Um, so, I lost my train of thought. Hold on. Oh, yes. So, okay, the credit card payment. Now, you have to do something special in your... If you're also using your database to reconcile, then you need to do something special when you um, use your checking account to pay a credit card bill. Now, again, this is only if you're using this database to reconcile your account. Because if you're using it to reconcile an account, first of all, you're going to have to enter in an opening balance which you can do right up here, you know, 1112, uh, checking account, opening balance, and then enter that amount. The other thing that you're going to have to do is, um, whenever you use your checking account to pay a credit card bill, you actually have to enter it twice, because you're, check, you're tracking your checking activity and your credit card activity. This is how you enter it. Um, so let's say on... Uh, let's say 131.12, you enter, you're using your checking account, the name is City, pay CC bill. Um, you actually, if you're only using the account to track income and expenses, you can actually leave this blank because we're only tracking income and expenses. And when you pay your credit card, it's not an expense that you have to track again. You've already tracked all of these individual expenses. So you can leave that blank if you wish, and you can put in a negative for your checking account and let's say it came to $500, that's fine. And on the same date, well, the name, the name is City. This is the same again. You don't need an account. And you can put this in as a positive number. So I want to bring that to your attention. And the best of all is, since these account fields are blank, they're not going to show up in your income and expenses. And this is a good thing, because if they did, they'd be double counted. So I'm going to refresh this. And you'll see in our slicer, all right, we have some blank stuff, but that's fine. We've accounted for all of our income and all of our expenses. <laughs> yes, it is, it, is, it is approaching double entry accounting, which we don't want to get too much into in Excel, because if you really want double entry, you might as well get QuickBooks or something. But uh, or some other accounting software, but it, it's a good point, and I thank you for making that observation, Debbie. So that's what I would do. And again, you only have to do this thing with paying the checking account, uh, paying using your checking account to pay your credit card, if you're using this database to reconcile as well. Okay, that's enough on the personal activity for the moment. And what I'd like to go to next is let's create another spreadsheet and let's go for investments. So how do you think we'll start off? Absolutely, in a very similar manner. Let's have the date. Let's have the um, investment 
type. Maybe we want to later summarize by, I don't know, stop, bonds, DVs, that type of thing. Um, investment name. You could even put in a category for ticker if you're tracking in your, your stock investments and you want to put in a ticker symbol. Oh, we can do that. Ticker symbol, that's fine. And amount. Now, in this case, we not only want amount, we may also want quantity. It depends, of course, on the type of investment that you're making. So let's center, bold, bottom border, and wrap text because that's the way I always do things. I know that you have your way that you always do things, and that is great. And let's go ahead with some information. In fact, let's just copy and paste some dates here. And investment type, uh, let's go for some stocks. Stock, 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 stock. And investment name, uh, someone give me the name of a company to invest in. In fact, we'll put one here in the bottom as a box. We can have one of those too. Let's see what, what everyone has to say. Who should we invest in today? GE. Okay, great. Okay, Apple. Great. Microsoft. Facebook, right? <laughs> we have two votes for Facebook. Okay, good. We need we need two more or a repeat of, of what's above. This is good. I don't know if we're going to pick or someone. No, the GE is GE. That's what everybody else is. And that's FT and Mars. That's great. And we'll do another one for Apple. That's fine. Um, I'm going to make up ticker, ticker symbols here because I have no idea what they are. And what was Apple APP? Fine. Oh, APPL. We actually have an official ticker symbol. Thanks to Rohit for that. And quantity. I'm going to make up some quantities here. I'm going to say, um, let's say 70. I'm going to make up 30 and 100 and 5 and 60 and 1,000 and whatever that is. Okay, now amount. Um, actually, let's add a column for unit price. And let's generate some random numbers here. So we'll just put in some, these are going to be dollars, actually. So we'll, we'll go like this. The dollar sign. Oh, for my keyboard shortcut lovers, if you highlight an area and hit Control Shift 4, the number 4 being where the dollar sign is. Control Shift 4 turns all of these numbers into dollars. So um, let's see, let's put in some random numbers. Let's say you pay $100 for these and $5,000 for those. In fact, that's fine. And we'll put in, um, what? We, should, we should put all these in negative numbers, which more reminds me, I'll show you a great technique to kind of turn positive numbers into negative numbers in a couple of steps. You're going to love it. Uh, well, more random numbers, $400, $3,000, um, $500, and $3,000. Now, I, put, I just promised you a great technique of how to turn positive numbers into negative numbers just like that. Here's the answer. It's a wonderful feature that's available in all the versions of Excel it's called Paste Values. Uh, sorry, it's called Paste Special. I'm going to type the number one, negative one out here, copy, and highlight all of these. Now from the home page, I'm going to click on Paste Special and Multiply. Can you see the potential for how all of these numbers will become negative numbers in just a moment? Click OK. Done. I'm going to do that again. To turn all these positive numbers into negative numbers, I type negative 1, Copy, Highlight, Home tab, Paste Special, multiply, and I click OK. Done. And I want to turn these into dollars again, so I'll just go like this. Um, there is, uh, Nevin, there is a shortcut to turn uppercase into caps, or between upper and lower. Send me an email about that uh, after the, the webinar, because we're not going to do that in the scope of the financial webinar, but do send me an email and I'll, I'll send you a quick answer on that one. So, we have an amount, this times that, yes, and here we go, double click the fill handle and we're off and running. Uh, for a bond, let's put in something we're purchasing, I don't know, $25,000 bond and that's okay, quantity, let's say, one, so we get something here. 
So you see some, some potential here for how this is going to go. Now let's also turn this into a table. What do we do to do that again? We did that, that was one of the first things. Table, table. It's up here in the insert tab. Don't forget to click somewhere in your table first, but you don't have to highlight it. Insert, whoop, insert table. Here we go. Beautiful. Let's say, you know, we don't want a red one. Let's say we want a lime green one. That's fine too. All you have to do is click. It's done in an instant. I, I say don't waste your brain power on stylistic things. Let them, let them happen very quickly. And oh, this, this remained blue from last time. How annoying is that? Look at this feature. It's called Format Painter. And it's available on the Home tab. Click what you like. Hit Format Painter. And click where you would like that format applied. It's not blue anymore. It's green. But of course, we want it formatted as a date. And that'll do it. That's just fine. Good. Now let's let's say we have a stock sale. Let's say on two one twelve stock. Let's say we're going to sell our Apple stock, and we want to make a decision on how much to sell. Well, how much do we even have? How much you say? That calls for a summary. A summary calls for you guessed it, a pivot table. So let's have a look at our holding before we decide how much to sell. Where was that again? You bet, the insert tab. Insert, pivot table, skip all that stuff and click OK. The question, what do we want to measure? In this case, let's measure quantity. Wherever we want to measure is down here in the values field. And investment name. There we go. Now this is showing us count of quantity, which we don't want. I don't care how many times I had a, a transaction with Apple. I want the total quantity of shares. This is the answer to the question. How do you turn count into sum? The answer, double click. When you double click, you get the pop-up box. I don't want count, I want sum. And while we're here, look at all the other stuff you can get. Average, max, min, all the great geeky stuff, which I really love. But for the moment, let's go with sum. Quantity, and you say, ah, between all my purchases and sales, I'm now in possession of 1,030 shares of Apple. I can go and I can decide to sell 500 shares. And that's fine. We would sell 500. You know what's occurring to me? We have a negative and a negative here. These unit prices shouldn't be negative numbers. They should be positive numbers. The unit price is the unit price. So here we go again with page special, multiply, and let's turn those into dollars. Now this makes more sense. Good. We paid $7,000. Good. That makes more sense. Okay. And let's say we are selling 500 at, I don't know, let's make up a price of whatever, $400 a share, whatever it is and we get 20,000. Now let's update the pivot table. Right click, refresh. Now we're in possession of 530 shares. As you can imagine, you can also run a pivot table to see your overall profitability with Apple, or with anything else um, here in this list. So let's say we want amounts. We want to measure amounts, so we drag that down, some of amount. Overall, home tab, dollar sign. We've spent this much on Apple net of proceeds from sale. So that's where we are so far. You've seen that a pivot table is hugely flexible. Um, we can put investment type here as a filter and we can only look at stocks. And this, this $25,000 bond here is about to disappear. And of course we can use a, um, a slicer for that as well. Let's get rid of investment type and let's put in a slicer for investment type and let's only look at stocks. Let's only look at bonds. Click. Let's only look at stocks. Click. So you have that kind of flexibility. So there is really a lot of information that you can create for yourself here in a summary form um, about your experiences with your investments. And if for some reason you want to retain if you want to look at the detail, then 
one thing you also get with a table automatically is a set of filters. And not a slicer, because a slicer is only available with pivot tables, but let's say you want to look at only your activity having to do with Apple. See how I made that happen? Let me do it again. Investment name. I uncheck everything and check off Apple. I click OK. And here I have my detail of my ins and outs with Apple. You can do this with mutual funds as well. Um, all you have to do is, you know, is fill out the information that makes sense. For example, mutual uh, mutual fund might go here. Investment name might be, you know, the Fidelity Growth and Income Fund. And it's, I don't know, ticker symbol. symbol. But you can put your quantity in the unit price. You can add anything here that really makes sense to you, that really speaks to you and your situation. Thank you to Rohit for asking that question. Okay. Um, we're going to, oh, oh, and of course, being a, a pivot table and being well structured with a lot of detail, you can always run charts and graphs on this as well. Um, good. Now, I also promised you a brief segment on saving up for something special. Now, we've been through a lot together this afternoon with tracking personal activity and investments. You can probably start to see how you might use Excel to save up for something special. And as a matter of fact, you can even use something like this to set aside a certain amount from every paycheck or to to track, all right, you know, I want, uh, I don't know, what's something special you're saving up for? I'm looking in the chat window to see how we can use Excel to track saving up for something special. Trip to Hawaii. All right. I'm going with uh, Marjorie, it seems. Marjorie, Marjorie and I are going on a trip to Hawaii. Excellent. So let's, there's, there's a, there are a couple ways to do this. And seeing as our, our webinar is, we only have just a few minutes remaining, I'm going to build a basic structure. For example, uh, date, item, total cost, uh, target, um, target date. And then you can have um, monthly set aside. Oops. Okay, I do my compulsive formatting because I just have to. And actually, we don't need date, not for this. So we have trip to Hawaii, and I'm going to make up a number of ten thousand dollars. And now I can hit Control Shift Four. I can click here and make that dollars. Target date, let's, uh, let's say 12.31.12, 12, monthly set aside. That's a calculation that you can make right here, saying, all right, if, if today is if early February, we have 11 months, right? So we take this divided by 11. There we have our monthly set aside. If we want to go to Hawaii and pay for it, remember, remember this isn't the target date for travel. This is the target date for paying for it. And we're going to have to set aside $900 a month between now and then. Now, this is where some of those, those values come into play. So you've made the decision to go to Hawaii, and this is fabulous, and rest and relaxation is part of who you are and what you're about, and that is purpose. Also, since you decided to have this set aside, you're going to say yes to yourself with Hawaii. And you might, because of the constraints of a budget, you might say no to yourself in other areas. I'm going to get a new such and such next year because this year I'm going to Hawaii. This is the key to freedom and budgeting. This is your opportunity not to say, oh my gosh, I only have this much to work with. How am I ever going to get to Hawaii? I can't. This is your opportunity not to say no to yourself, but to say yes to yourself. All right, I'm going to Hawaii. And I'm going to save like $900 a month in order to get there. And I'm saying yes to Hawaii and no to something I might say no to. I might say no to a, uh, a trip between now and then, a minor trip that can you know, cost a, an extra $1,000. I might say no to that because I'm saying yes to Hawaii. And that's where you can really empower yourself around your budget. Not, it's not about what you can do, but it's about what you, what you, it's not about what you can't do. It's, what about, it's about what you're deciding to do instead. Now, it's uh, just about 1 o'clock, and there is something that I promised you that I wanted to show you um, very briefly. The same structure that we use here for your business, for your personal 
can be used for starting off in a business as well. And I'm, I'm emphasizing starting off because ultimately you really want proper accounting software. But it's always good. It's you know you've already paid for it. It comes with your computer. Um, if you've made those arrangements, um, you can use it as well to establish a baseline for a business, a business budget. And here's where it's at for a business as well. Use your pivot table to track where your business money is going and compare that against the budget. And from that, from this comparison, you can actually, you can be in action about your sales goal. What activity is required to cover these expenses? And if you wish to take a draw from your business at X thousand dollars a month, and these are your expected business expenses, total them all up here and say, all right, I need to generate at least $4,200 a month in sales to cover my expenses. What type of activity do you and your people need to be engaging in on a monthly or weekly basis so you can meet those sales targets? Of course, being Excel, you can get into a lot more complicated analysis and everything, but that is your access. What you learn today through your personal numbers, some, even some investments, and saving up for something special. All of these techniques can be used in helping you start up a business with tracking your expenses, setting targets, and ultimately being in action about them. Now there's one more Excel technique that I promised you, and it's called freeze pains. And I always make sure that the people who attend my seminars get what they're promised, so I'm gonna show you this very briefly. This is a very long list. It's a short list, so it's very approachable. But suppose time passes and you have a very long list, and look, um, you know, you're, you're going up here, and now if you're using a table format, you see these account, these lines appear automatically for you, which I absolutely love. But I also wanted to tell you that if for some reason you're working on a format that's not a table format, convert back to a normal range, yes. If you scroll down, you don't get those headings. And I want to show you how to do that. first. Highlight the row below the headings, and from the View tab, choose Freeze Panes. Done. And now look what happens. No matter how far down you scroll, you always have these on top. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the tools that I wanted to share with you today. I hope that you have learned uh, something about Excel 2007 and 10. Everything I showed you today is available in both 2007 and 2010, except the Slicer, which is only available in 2010. Additionally, uh, all of these techniques that I showed you, except the Slicer, are also available in Excel 2003 and prior. Um, only for the pivot tables, what you click on uh, is slightly different. You click on the data uh, menu instead of the insert tab. Um, I hope that you found this time valuable as a, a way to open a conversation a window into your, your personal activity, how you can use Excel to get some peace of mind, and how you can use Excel to make decisions regarding your business, investments, where you're spending your money in your personal life, and whether or not that is in accordance with your core values. Ultimately, I use tools like this to help me with being powerful around my personal finances, having peace of mind, and making short-term and long-term spending decisions. I would also like to express gratitude for the New Jersey Society of CPAs to, um, in holding this, holding this webinar, and I want to share with you my contact information. If you would like to get in touch with additional questions, or if you'd like to connect, I use, as you can see, a slew of social media, and uh, even though these are long uh, addresses, you can see there's the J. Campbell CPA theme. I invite you to stay in touch, connect, send me your questions, your ideas, Open up a conversation about Excel, about personal budgeting, about starting your business. You can also uh, be in touch with my firm. We have a Facebook page at uh, Bartlemy Cucciarelli and our website. And the New Jersey Society of CPAs really amazing resources at moneymattersnj.com. Thank you so much for spending an hour with me today. I really enjoyed working with you, seeing your feedback, having some fun. And I look forward to hearing about your success.